Hello everybody, Calamity here, and I don't rock in stone in Deep Rock Galactic. Today's video is going to be all about the Spiral Abyss that just came out uh, last reset. And it's proven to be a tough one, and I think it's just because it's a new one, like a new iteration of it. There's a new set of enemies in Floor 11 and 12. And in this video, I'm only going to go over Floor 12, but if you are struggling on Floor 11 and want me to do a similar video on it, uh, just let me know down in the comments below and, I, and I'll think about it. But for now, let's just talk about Floor 12. And this is just footage from my previous stream where I took it on. This is my second attempt. I did try with an earlier team, but I did not realize. Uh, if you look at the Floor 12 enemy list, they say that there's two of those Fatui operative agent things. And I thought it was the regular version. What they don't tell you is that it is the mini boss version. But what I'm told is that I guess the portraits are different. I didn't notice. I did. It's the mini boss version of these Fatui agents. So if you haven't encountered them in Fontaine, they are pretty tanky and, you know, add on to the high level of the Spiral Abyss and it's more of the same, maybe even worse. But let's go ahead and take a look, -sees. So for my first half team here, I am using Raiden, Shogun, Yulon, Kazuha and Zhongli. Now, obviously, this is a full on five star team, so it's not really new player slash free to play friendly. However, there are characters in this team you can replace. Um, you know, you don't have to use this exact team to see results. It's just a team that I usually go to when the Spiral Abyss changes and I'm not sure how to play around it quite yet. So this is my go to team. And then I have Hyper Bloom on the second half. So first off here we have the Pyro Fire Mage and then I forgot what these little ball things are on the sides but they have a Dendro Shield so just bring elements that are appropriate for breaking both the Pyro Mage's shield as well as the uh, shields of the balls. <laughs> So there I'm popping Yulon's ult, popping everybody's ult for Raiden's um, burst damage here. If anything, I might put my Hyper Bloom here. Okay, sorry about the blurriness, this is just, it's, just Twitch things. So there's the Dendro shield. Geo's not gonna do anything to it. You need to do reactions on the Dendro shield, right? So, water helps, Electro helps, Pyro will help, things like that. Yeah, it's fine, no big deal. Here is where my first attempt, I had to reset immediately because I did not realize we were taking it to mini bosses here. So we have Sola and Natasha here, which they, they do fight like the Fatui agents if you're familiar with fighting them, but they just have way more health and do a lot more damage than the normal ones, so. They are still susceptible to any sort of grouping and you definitely want them to be grouped up together as much as possible because they do teleport around and that is super, super annoying. I don't even know what that means. Oh, the, are you talking about the news? This is a misplay by me here because I popped Raiden Shogun's burst. I should have done Kazuha and, and Zhongli's to, to get more burst damage here. So this is actually a big mistake on my part. The new uh, weapon. I did not even think about it for Zhongli. I'm upset. That's actually a good one. I'm gonna be pausing often, so if it's annoying you by now, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, you can see that they sort of start to teleport away from each other, and then I'm constantly using Kaza's skill to pull them back together, and that's exactly how you want to play this fight. Or if you're using a character like Nuvalet, who doesn't care if they're grouped up or not, because you have such a big beam that pierces through enemies that you just want to make sure you're aligned uh, to hit them both, that also works. <laughs> Oh, 
You're right, it's hard to group them up. Yes, it is. It can be a little annoying. I'm assuming they're not picked up by Animo. But they teleport. Oh, okay, I was about uh -oh. to answer this question. It still took me like two minutes. Alright. Do not feel bad if it takes you two ish minutes to clear the first half of chamber 12. Uh, chamber 1 on floor 12, excuse me. Because the second half is the Jade Plume Terrace Room, and this boss is free, honestly. This boss is free. If you bring Electro, it will get stunned, and it literally does nothing but be a gigantic bird paperweight that you can just wail on. So, any sort of Electro will do here. You don't have to do Hyper Bloom. You can also do Aggravate if you want. You can do anything. Anything that you think does great single target damage that has some sort of Electro element involved, just do it. You'll stun the bird. That's exactly what I do here. At least this thing is free. Yes. Exactly, exactly right. It is free. Again, we have a shield from Kirara so we can ignore any sort of damage that this boss is doing. And there you go, because of the Electro application, the boss is just stunned, free damage, just wail on it. I've been wailing on it for like, almost 25 seconds and it's already almost dead, so, not a big deal. Very, very easy here. But yeah, that first half is definitely the more challenging one, so you're gonna want to bring your more optimized, stronger team for it. Yeah, let's just go ahead and wrap this up. And that's it. That's the first chamber. So this one is... I think I mess up here. But let's go ahead and just watch anyways. This is one of a bunch of specters. Whoa! I was hella zoomed in on that armpit. <laughs> I got a weird camera angle because I was next to Zhang Li's uh, uh, pillar. We finish off the specters. Wait, is it three? Oh god. I was thinking if there was more than three Whopper flowers on the field, it's just the three fire ones, so... You might want to bring, uh, again, another Hydro element just in case they get their shield, which can be annoying to deal with, but... Then you get these four um, enemies again. These four knights. They can be grouped up. I die here again. Sorry for the blurriness. It's just just happens when there's so much happening on the screen. I die here because I don't notice the floor effect, the, the rocks that spawn under you, and then yeah, that was just taking a lot of damage from both the enemies and then the floor effect and all the stuff happening. So I die here and I have to immediately retry. So let's just go ahead and skip a little bit. This one's pretty straightforward. I mean, Kazuha again makes this chamber so much easier because you can just group them up together, but anyone will work here. Any AoE damage that doesn't match the Spectre's element. So you have a lot of Kazuha damage, you have a lot of Yulan damage. Zhongli as well if I need the Meteor. Fucking Spectres. Watch your mouth, Ray. Um, so for the Whopper Flowers, if you do not have Kazuha or a grouper on your team, what you can do is run to the opposite side of the arena and all three Whopper Flowers will dig underground and then they'll pop up right next to you for easy grouping, but they already kind of start off next to each other, so you don't really have to do that. Um, but, you know, options. I hate how they explode, because it takes like an extra few seconds to kill them. This is true. <laughs> So, to try this again, I just be a little bit more cautious of the floor and all the attacks going on here. I should have used Shang Li's ult, but it's okay. You definitely want to go for the big guy 
last, in my opinion, because he'll always aggro to you. Whereas the archer and the banner holder, they kind of like try to stay away from you. So it's okay for to go from there. And that was a really fast How much time. Was that? Should be enough for whatever this thing is. That was 115 past panda. This boss, I mean, I'm sure you all have seen this boss many times in the Spiral Abyss before, so there's really not too much to explain here, but just for the newer people that aren't familiar, this boss can be a little annoying because of the RNG aspect of it, but, but we'll we'll explain it as it goes. Hyper Bloom is also good here because you, you can hit it while it's in the air. Like that. You can see some of the Hyper Bloom seed, or Dendro Core seeds going up. Again, shields allow us to ignore most of this boss's attack, so I don't really have to dodge anything. Kirara. Can you split up already? Usually it does split up around the halfway point, but... If you end up doing more damage to it, it, it will sometimes split once it's like down to a third or even a fourth of its health. Like this. Please. Right. Neat players. If you don't know the trick to this boss yet, I'll tell you. When this boss splits into four different mech enemies, look for the one with the ring around it. That is the one you have to kill to disable this shield that applies to the boss once it reaches that third of its health left. So if I pan the camera around and then I look for the one with the ring, go straight for it. And just focus on that one only. It's the only one that matters. So as soon as it's down, all of the mechs go into a disabled state, and so does the boss. And it's free to wail for literally the next 38, or probably like 35-ish seconds. Time it takes me to get over there, yeah. 35 seconds of me just being able to free damage it with Hyper Bloom. That was an easy, easy chamber. It looks intimidating because there's a lot of enemies on the first half, but again, you definitely don't have to clear it as fast as I did. You can feel free to take a little bit more time on that first half because the second half, again, the bosses, even though they they seem more intimidating because they're bosses, it's not that bad. <laughs> This boss, if you don't want to deal with dodging like me, you definitely want to bring a shielder here. Just bring one so you don't have to deal with all of the annoying attacks. But even then, even with my Zhongli shield, they still do so much damage that they will break it. And in fact, I believe I do mess up here, so... I should have saved that Zhongli burst because when they're most dangerous, this boss, when the dancers are separated. When they're together, they actually do some basic attacks, but nothing crazy. I should have used Zhongli's burst later because I can iframe through their more dangerous moves when he skates away. So see, when they're together, he just does this like circle thing. It's not bad. She almost did. When they're split, the female dancer will do an AoE animo attack around her. And the guy that's skating around the edge of the arena will shoot three like ice projectiles at you. Um, while he skates around. So you kind of have to have your camera on him to like know when they're coming if you are going like the dodging route. Um, if you're lazy like me and you just want to use a shield to power through it, just use your shield <laughs> and then just keep wailing on the boss. Just be careful when it breaks. Nice. <laughs> 
ここより弱滅の突きうんよし<laughs> Sorry for the language. Um, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. My shield broke. I took a lot of damage. Raiden's already low enough as is, so she ends up dying here. I actually went on ahead to just look what I did. I forgot. I said, I'm gonna let Yelan finish the rest so I can see uh, the next boss. And I, I did make a mistake here because. I'm not sorry, where I gotta keep everyone alive. <laughs> okay. Huh. This boss I have not fought in a while, so I forgot what the quote unquote trick is. So Good I kind of mess up here. What you want to do, other than bring Geo to make this super easy, is you want to spam the dive attacks. The constantly, because the gravity is lowered, so you don't have to bring like a Zhao or Cloud Retain or anything like that. Just spam jump. Keep plunge attacking uh, into the shield and you will break it with anybody. So I make that mistake here, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to my retry so I can show you how it's properly done because I just make the same mistake of like, why isn't my hyper bloom working? Uh, don't try to force your way through, just break the shield. Once the shield is down, the, the boss goes into a weakened state and then just go to town with whomever you want to use. Alright, here's my <laughs> actual final retry, I think. Yeah, you gotta be careful with this boss. They hurt a lot. But yeah, you can see the... I'll point this out for people that are actually trying to dodge this boss, unlike me. You can see that the female dancer twirls around, or like she spins around for a bit, and then right before she does her attack, she kind of stops spinning, and then that's when the AoE gets unleashed. So that's, that's her cue. To know that she's about to attack and that's where you would back off if you're melee right if you're using a melee character and you don't have a shield you want to back off for a sec let her do her attack then go back in you can see i use zhongli's shield a little too late and he ended up taking a bit of damage there but that's okay He is really tanky. For a reason. I didn't build no 41,000 HP on him just so I couldn't get hit. Using it. And I'm using the shield again. That's some good swirl damage. There we go, we were able to clear that boss in a minute and ten oh, and that take me, hopefully. Honestly, clearing that boss, I could have done it a little bit faster, but I was a little scared because I didn't want my Raiden Shogun to die. So I was playing a little safe with Yulon's normal attacks with her burst up so I could stay at a little bit of ranged safety. So here I understand the strat of like, okay, we need to break that shield. So just do this. Doesn't matter what character you bring, do this over and over again. I reapply the shield so I don't have to worry about taking damage with Kirara. I just keep doing that. And eventually, bam! Shield gone. It does take a while to break the shield. You see it took me like 30 seconds or so to, to break it. And that's honestly, that's the tankier part of the boss. Because once the shield's down, go to town. I don't know why I did that. There we go. I'm wasting a little bit of time there, but it's okay. Try to get that damage in. There we go. I was able to... As long as you can do half before the next shield comes up, it should take me again another 20-ish seconds to break it. The shield, that is, and then, you know, you kill the boss. So let's just see. Again, spam, plunge. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I use Kirara just so I can apply my shield back. Yeah. 
Natakushi no ouchi ni irashai. Oboeta wa yo. And shield is down, and that is pretty much a wrap on the Spiral Abyss. Hey, we're done. That is all three chambers, three starred for floor 12 on the new iteration of it. Again, I cannot stress this enough to anyone who struggles with the Abyss. I cannot recommend enough using a shielder. I use two in both of my teams, and you might be saying, well, I don't have Zhongli, that's not fair. You can see that I, you know, Zhongli only exists on one team. My other team doesn't have Zhongli. I'm using Kirara and her shield was more than enough to make the runs on at least the second half feel comfortable. For the first half, you know, if you don't have Zhongli, then there are other characters that exist like Layla, who was given for free almost a year ago now. But hey, she was still given away and she is a very solid shielder. She's considered to be the second best shielder in the game right below Zhongli, so... You know, if you build her well and, and you maximize that shield, you'll be pretty tanky as well. And the reason I recommend a shielder so much is because you get to ignore so many of the bosses and enemies attacks that you can just focus on doing damage. You don't have to worry about getting interrupted. You don't have to worry about stopping to dodge, which can take up so much of your valuable time in spirals. So that's why that's one of my biggest tips that I can give to anyone struggling in a is to get shielders built. Doesn't matter who, just get them built, max out those shields. The other thing that I can't stress enough is Hyper Bloom. Ever since Hyper Bloom slash Burgeon to a lesser extent was added into the game, they it has seriously been one of the strongest teams in the entire game for like a really long time. Now obviously they got a little bit power crept by some really strong Fontaine characters, but that doesn't matter. It's still a really strong team. If you've watched my previous videos before, I always talk about like Oh, hey, I'm using Hyperbloom in this uh, iteration of the Abyss, or for this guide, I'm using Hyperbloom team, or this setup. Like, I always, always, always use Hyperbloom. It's been insanely strong, insanely easy to play, and this one is more of the free-to-play friendly versions, because I'm usually using, excuse me, mainly four stars here. I'm using Kuki Shinobu, I'm using Jing Cho, I'm using Kirara. The only five star on it is Nahida, which... Another character I really recommend for Hyper Bloom teams, but you don't have to use her. You can use Dendro Traveler, you can use Kali. Uh, they also do apply hi uh, Dendro, just not as well as Nahida, and you know, with a little less convenience, but they will still get the job done um, as well. So even if you don't have Nahida, I highly, highly recommend building a Hyper Bloom team. It just makes life so much easier. And then for the first half team, you don't have to copy what I did at all. Like, I know I used a bunch of five stars and, and Raiden Shogun, Yulon, Kaza. It's like, that's not fair. You can honestly use whoever you want. And I'm sure any main for any character will tell you that they were able to do the first half, at least of the Abyss with, you know, whoever. It doesn't have to be Raiden Shogun. You could do like the Cloud Retainer, Diluc, Lunge, Strat thing that I've been seeing. You can um, use the international team. You can use a spread slash aggravate team. You can use Tartaglia's international team. Like there's so many options. Do not feel like only one thing will work. Try different teams, try different setups, try what matches your play style, what feels comfortable to you. And honestly, you'll be able to conquer the spiral of this. You know, if, if you don't feel like your characters are strong enough, that's okay. You can always build build them to be better, get those talents up, get those artifacts, you know, more optimized artifacts. Sorry if you're hearing my dogs bark, they're getting excited. But that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I'll be making more in the future. And if you have any other questions about the Spiral Abyss for any of the chambers um, or the floors, even like 11 if you're struggling, um, let me know. I'll do my best to try to help you out. And that's pretty much it for me. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.